everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be working in Kirby Roseanne's Fragile Worlds. I've picked this red panda page and I'm going to be using the Winsor & Newton watercolour paints and I've just shown you a little overview of everything that I'll be using. I will link all the watercolour paints and the paint brushes that I use along with the tape as well in the description if you are interested. I do end up using two different types of watercolour in this uh, painting. I do use the Winsor & Newton Cotman, I believe, the, the more student grade paints, I do believe, and the Paul Rubens. Now, I use the Paul Rubens on the trees purely because I can mix a large amount of colour with them paints because they're in tube forms and they're not in the pans. So unfortunately I've not got the names of the Windsor and Newton paints. If I would have bought these paints now, I would have took the stickers off and then put them on the swatch chart so I would have known the names of the paints, you know, to share with everyone. But this was right at the start of me doing any sort of watercolour and any sort of paint. And I didn't even realise that you could actually do that. So I'm I'm going in a bit blind here with different colours. I've just mixed different colours together. Same with the, the Paul Rubens, I've not actually written down my, my colours that I use, I do apologise. But nonetheless, it's just a brown colour and I do go in it and shade with a darker brown colour. So all I've done there is just add a tiny bit of, it was Payne's Grey and Black just to darken the brown colour up. But the actual panda, red panda, I want to say red panda, yeah. I just base that with just a solid colour and I can see myself looking back now that it is a little bit blotchy in certain areas. This is not watercolour paper, it isn't watercolour paper, so you know this is going to happen. But my plan was to go over with her strokes individually and I ended up scrapping that idea completely. This was quite late at night when I ended up doing this page and there was no way I was going to be doing it stroke by stroke, but you'll you'll see coming up anyway. So all I'm doing here is the base colour that I used, I've just slightly darkened it with a deeper shade of brown. And I'm just going in and adding some shading and attempting some strokes of her, but I don't think the paintbrush that I was using was small enough. I'm still getting used to all these different sort of paint brushes and paints so do bear with me I do apologize that if you're a professional watercolor painter and you're watching this and going mm, I'm still learning I, I really am I'm still learning so it's the same thing with the rain on the trees as well just the shading I've just added a touch of black and a darker brown just to add a little bit of definition and a little bit of shading Thank you. 
Now I've let all of that area completely dry, even on the panda, even on the trees, the branches, I've let it completely dry. And I'm going over and basing the sky. Now I wanted this picture to be a night sky. Now if the, this was on watercolour paper, I would have used the wet on wet technique. Now there's no way that I could do this on this paper. Don't think by any means that I'm bashing this paper because in all of Kirby's books, the paper is fabulous. For the money that you pay for his books, they really, really are good quality books. But now that I've been dabbling a little bit in watercolour, I do like to do the wet on wet and there's no, like I said, there's no way of me, me doing that with this. So I've just based one colour all over and I do end up going over and wetting the very top areas and trying to do the wet on wet technique and you'll see that coming up in a minute. So all I've done here is the paint is already wet on the page and I've just picked up the pigment straight from the palette just so it was quite dark and added it right at the top of the page and let it bleed down. This is what you call the wet on wet technique now because it's not watercolour paper I didn't manage to pull it off as much as I would have wanted it to. Now I'm going in with the Polychromos pencils by Faber Castell so I'm just showing you here. All the nice pencils and I do apologise there was a couple of clips that do get snippet out of this it was a problem between either my camera or my phone it just got completely cut out but you get the idea I literally used these pencils just for a little bit of shading I did start off with trying to color in the fur brush stroke by brush stroke but then I decided against it like I said it was late at night there was no way that I was gonna sit there and do that up until 12 o'clock at night, no chance. So I've just gone ahead and shaded with this, these pencils. There's, I think there's only two or three colours that I used in the end. The only reason that I was using the Polychromos pencils is just to add a tiny little bit more of definition. I just wanted a little bit more shading in certain areas. I didn't want to have to mix the paint again, I didn't want to have to wait for it to dry. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to use a shortcut and use some pencils and you know, it, it turned out nice. Now we're painting the snow and I always use for any sort of white acrylic or black acrylic I will always use the Americana brand. I absolutely love this brand especially the black. The black you only need one coat for a matte black background and you can go over it with coloured pencils especially Prismacolor work really well with this uh, acrylic paint but Specifically this white you do have to layer it because the line art is quite dark in certain areas. You do see me going back later on in the video and I do go, go over some of the areas. You know you, you can see some of the little squiggles by Kirby and I just wanted them to be gone. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we're coming up to the end of the page and all I've done is with a leftover acrylic paint I've added a lot of water and I'm using just a flat brush and I'm using like a stipple effect just to create tiny little bits of snowflakes across the page. Now this is the end result. I do hope that you like it. It is a little bit of a mixed media page, pencils and paints. If you're new, please do subscribe and like the video if you do enjoy it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.